If you're wondering why I'm a monkey, it's because I'm recording this on stream. So Twitch link down below. We're going to be trying out a Teddy build. Now, I want to do damage. And in this mode, we have very few elemental rounds. There's like three of them. So I think a physical Teddy is the way to go. And I have never ran Trailblazer in the lead. So I recycled one of my Zenith copies because it was supercharged. I have a 130 on hand. It's no big deal. But I recycled them so I could supercharge her. We got Teddy damage going up by 46%. Fire rate is improved. We got happy holidays for the cooldown. We got Fragment Generation for the cooldown. We got Bear With Me for Extended Teddy Duration, which is also the cooldown. And then we got a Possibility Matrix for the cooldown. That might be overkill, but I still suspect it's not an infinite Teddy. I don't have an, uh, a ton of experience with Teddy, so that's what I'm going for. Pressing Charges is fantastic because she buffs both Shock Tower and Teddy by 30%, and you don't even need a Fragment. And then Under Warranty is actually pretty good. You have 100% crit chance on new targets, which means you're basically starting every new target with a big crit, and then they die faster. And then 5% of the time it'll malfunction, which just triggers a new target a bunch of different times, and it's a really good way to go. So that's all I got to say. Let's hop into the new Horbo game mode and uh, check this out. You know, thanks to the lovely keybinds of Fortnite, I find myself interested in changing this. So I have nine bound to the button on top of my mouse. That is how I dash around efficiently, and I want to be able to do that. So I'm just going to swap these so I can phase shift between the objectives and make my life a bit easier. All right, wave one begins. I found five fragments before this mission started, so I... Uh, we got a lot of those to use up, and I wonder if I'll make a profit. I mean, this thing is just annihilating. Now, obviously, the early games, I'm going to get a lot more kills. So I feel like a drone plus Teddy is a great way to just get a bunch of eliminations, farm up a bunch of fragments. And as Toa has been telling me in chat, the fragments respawn after every wave. And with three seconds left on the cooldown, my Teddy is available. That is really nice. Teddy's also got some good range, too. So I should be able to put it right here, and it'll, you know, take them out, take them out as I spawn. But the drones are kind of going a little crazy. Oh, what do we got over here? A little shock tower time that gets its damage buffed as well. Oh my goodness. That is the strongest that is going to be for a while. I didn't have any specific plans to level up. Oh, you know what? I should actually save those shock towers. It's interesting because I want to save them. I want to use them because they're shock towers, but they also use up my fragments and I need to be wary of that. And uh, I, I don't know if that's going to be a big deal. Like I said, fragments respawning every round. That's going to add up pretty quick, but I feel like drones and Teddy is the most efficient way to do things. And so long as the enemies aren't too close to the base, maybe now is a good time. Um, I don't think I'm going to have to use a shock tower unless it matters. Now, I said, I don't know if I'm going to craft any weapons this game. I feel like a Xenon bow is perfect. I know it's the typical cliche boring pick. That weapon is just used by everybody always at all times, but it is so fantastic. How could I not? It's so good against the monoliths as well. We're going to have some crystal phases where you have to destroy those and they get annihilated by the Xenon bow. And I, I feel like that would just be an easy way to go, especially since this is a Teddy showcase. The Xenon bow would just be a boring, easy weapon that I don't have to think about. And that's just, oh, look at that. Look at that damage. I almost got my fragment back with one kill and I'm weirdly not profiting. So with that uh, fragment and support, Every 39 eliminations should be getting me a fragment, which does not seem to be profiting. I started with five, I'm down to two, and I'm not necessarily loving that. So some extra kills with an extra weapon, you know, like a Xenomo, would be a good way to get those eliminations. And I do believe the eliminations can come from anywhere. It doesn't need to be from the Teddy. So yeah, I'm gonna be killing off a few of these enemies, ending the wave, and I wanna see. So those, fra yeah, they really do. Those fragments come back after every single wave. So I'm going to collect up as many of these as I see. And I think this will be the main source of my fragments. Even though I didn't profit from the kills themselves, all I have to do is a little bit of scouting between waves, which let's be honest with two minutes between waves that I'll be cutting out for the rest of this video. I have a lot of free time. So I'm going to collect these in the meantime and uh, check in when the next wave begins. E you cannot be spoiling shows. I'm going to go record a video. I'm out of here. I'm just talking about Brooklyn Nine-Nine. Maddie was over here telling me things I do not need to be hearing about. <laughs> yeah, so with the fragments, I'm up to seven. I don't think I collected as many as before. I think I only got four. But one of them was a llama fragment, which, as I mentioned, in between waves, there is a lot of time to kill. And, uh, yeah, breaking down that llama was good for some material. Ooh, yeah, same ability. That was waste of a shock tower. But that... In between time is two minutes, about 10 seconds, which is almost enough time to make sure that my drones are back every single wave. So any advice to people running horde mode on their own or for the first time, don't be ashamed to use drones. It's easy, free damage. It comes back with plenty of time to spare. And, um, you know, it can help me get fragments. It can help you just do extra damage. It's a great thing to use in general. So uh, 
Drones! Fan! I'm a fan of drones, and I think you should use them too. So, this teddy right here is in an excellent spot. It's kind of enjoyable to just watch the damage. Let me get back here. It's moving around a lot. I think it might have just triggered a malfunction, but look at that. It's just doing some pretty, I don't know, pretty good damage. Now, we are on wave two, and I'm not going to record every wave of this, but I think it'll be worth noting that the teddy will get progressively worse as we... It's hard to follow it. I keep trying to position myself so I can see the teddy working, but it's it's moving so fast, I can't even see it. Um, there was an update where they actually changed it, where when it used to switch directions, it used to be instant, which was uh, not well known to be a bug for a long time and then they updated it to where it was turning slowly but then the very next update they changed it to move fast again so it was it was a minor blip a minor blip but uh, i'm glad it's back to normal so i think i'm just gonna kill enemies normally now for the rest of the wave and uh you know you know the drill check in with wave three ah yes pillar waves right as i get my xenon bow yeah pillar waves don't really count right now as of recording this pillars have like no hp and it's kind of a joke I like <laughs> If you crit, they die just right away. It's uh, not even really a challenge. And if you use a Xenon bow, you can shoot two at once. So it's uh, super biz super easy, barely an inconvenience. Oh, I screwed that up. So I've got a story for you guys. I uh, cobbled together the blast powder needed for a discharger. Thank you, Matteo and, uh, and musician. But then I realized I don't have enough blast powder to actually craft the ammo needed. So I'm in a bit of a predicament now again i need to remember to use my drones because they do come back after every wave so use them up use them up especially with healing death burst here i'm gonna need a lot of help this is definitely where the teddy is going to struggle and i like to demonstrate moments like this because i feel like it's worth noting like hey the weapon's not always good but, or the you know the teddy's not always gonna be useful i've never been a huge teddy fan all right teddy has a drawback of doing pretty not great damage in the end game, but power level 163 enemies are actually not that high, all things considered. I'm personally accustomed to the performance of level 250 enemies in 164 player missions. And so for me, it's actually pretty low damage. But since everything's physical and Trailblazer is really awesome, you are pretty much seeing the best a Teddy can be. Like I said, I recycled my 144 Zenith just to put those superchargers on uh, Trailblazer. So I, I, is it Blaster? I honestly don't know. Blazer. So I, I'm showing this Teddy as strong as it can be to my knowledge. Uh, I, I guess I don't have Ventura Ramirez, but I don't know. I don't know if that would have made much of a difference because I'd be swapping out Jilly for her. So it's, it's kind of the same thing, but I, um, I don't know. I think uh, I think it's doing pretty well because you know in this game mode because the enemies are already low like I mentioned and physical if you run a base uh, they're not getting through super easily so I'm not terribly concerned also on an unrelated note look at this tiger jaw I got this randomly every single game we've been getting like really decently perked weapons you never want triple I'm sorry double crit rating but still on a random weapon that's pretty good and uh, I think I might just keep it <laughs> Look what I just noticed. I skipped away, by the way. We'll, we'll, we'll check back in next wave. Look at that. Well, a fish, I think, in the wall. I love it. Also, to those who don't know, this is a uh, interesting location because if you keep going, all right, keep on moving. Look at this. It's a gnome dance party. They're all dead because we're using xenon bows and gnomes don't fare well in that. Maybe somebody had a daily challenge. I don't know. Uh, it's been kind of a massacre, so... Uh, yeah, you know, when they're alive, super cute. Super cute. And, um, but now, now they're not. Also, also, man, I, I, I started record. Oh, oh, that's not good. Uh-oh. Uh, guys, I need to save. Please, quick revive. Also, also, I just got my mind blown on stream because the monkey stream ended. That was a one hour redeem. This, this game mode is a time traveling game mode anybody who's played this watching this video probably can relate to the fact that like time flies by the one 24-hour stream i've ever done in my history was with the old horde mode and now i'm seeing why i still feel like i got out of bed 30 minutes ago and i've been live for five hours it's it's actually crazy all right so i skipped another wave because it was a pillar wave and the round was over in like 20 seconds but we're back we're back for real this time i've been collecting fragments pretty casually we're only at eight and this is where the uh, kill count's gonna go down quite a bit because, uh, well, it struggles. And I don't know that it's gonna be doing too well against these higher health targets, but mm, I don't know. It's doing all right. It's doing all right. It's taking an extra bullet. You can see it's leaving most enemies at like one HP now. It's taking that extra, extra hit. 
And that is going to affect things for sure. But I think dropping it right on a spawn point like this, when they're so spread out, that seems to be the right call. Uh, look at that. So <laughs> the flingers are throwing them up into the ceiling. And I love it. I've been noting that in every horde video I've recorded, and it is my favorite. Ah, favorite thing. I think a pot shot might be in order. I don't know. Because, oh, you know what? I keep forgetting to use my teddy. Uh, I don't think a pot, a, a pot shot might help because the, the discharger, I know I have it, but it's, you know, it's slow as demonstrated. Oh, I, I, I did not. I was trying to hit that guy at the same time. That was a massive disappointment, but um, it's slow. And the pot shot is a lot better for focused targets. Um, it does have the proximity problem, but it's it's something you can work around. And the Xenon bow here, though, is doing fine. It might do a little too little damage when you don't crit, but it can shoot through multiple targets, and that honestly makes up for things. Maybe I'll just drop this on a spawn point. See it annihilate everything that spawns in. Uh, you know what? Also kind of disappointing. Maybe I should be using this, this Tiger Jaw I picked up. Double crit rating is so bad, because we're... The second crit rating does like a negligible amount to the damage and the crit chance itself. And then it's critting for the normal 50% damage. Like it's it's so little, it's, it's kind of lame. So I don't know. I don't know. Doesn't matter. Another wave down. Another wave. How well does it do against a nurse? That's what I want to see. Am I going to be able to take out a nurse with this? I didn't think so. Yeah, it looked like that was a teammate just helping on me. Uh, that's probably the way to go because... Uh, it's not gonna do enough damage to out damage a nurse or like out heal a nurse So kind of just need to let it focus on the normal enemies. I'm still struggling I want to like this teddy build and I, I think it's kind of casual to just slap it down and let it do the work But it's also struggling in very notable ways and that was to be expected But I feel like it's doing about as good as a teddy build can do We have a bunch of physical targets that are under leveled and I'm forgetting my drones constantly <laughs> and it's it's actually it's doing all right. It's doing all right. I just want Teddy to do all the work. You know what? That's what I really want. I want to throw it down and I want to tear my brain off. So I, I don't like this whole having to keep thinking thing. Like, oh, there are nurses that make my Teddy do less damage. Gerd. <laughs> it's still doing pretty good, though. I'm digging it. I'm digging it. So this is going to be the last round I record for a while. I'm probably going to check in around wave 10, 11, 12 because... I wanted to note the progression as we went up stage by stage, and I kind of want to chill out and shoot some stuff off camera. So that's what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to be playing out the rest of this wave, and then we're going to see when the enemies get real tough. You know, up into the the, the later rounds, we'll have higher power level, and uh, we'll see if it just if it holds up or not. And I don't honestly know if it will, because it's doing all right right now. I've been a little lazy collecting fragments. I'll have to go back to that, but it's um, it's adequate. It's all right. If you want a build that is cost effective, if you're a newer player who doesn't have a lot of weapons and you want something that's going to require minimal crafting where you don't have to really worry about materials much, this is a good build. I still recommend getting weapons alongside it. That's why I'm using the Xenon Bow and the Discharger. They are just the most cliche, obvious picks, but there are so many weapons in the game that will also be good. So you can use whatever you enjoy, but I do recommend weapons alongside it because as shown, the Teddy can't do everything. Oh, yeah, I got so many fragments now. I got 16 teddies Not gonna be doing a lot to these elemental enemies Not not the strong suit of a physical teddy. Oh god. Oh god. Right. time to get away time to get away. Oh wait, hold on There's a drone. Okay now time to get away run away. <laughs> I don't think I'm gonna be very helpful in this match uh, Yeah, oh gosh, especially with the smashers. All right, here we go. Here we go. Uh-huh. There we go shredded apart. Oh, uh oh uh, you know what kind of went right through it kind of kind of an oopsie on that part the flingers again hitting that ceiling makes them way weaker than they normally would be but I can at least drop a teddy down and be helping a little bit uh, okay I was I was thinking about whether or not I should do a discharger shot because the discharge are so slow you know I remember when it first came out uh, for a long time we hailed it as a very very strong weapon oh shit and it is but it's also so slow to charge up and so expensive that it's a lot less worth it nowadays and i've i've no longer held the opinion that it's like broken um it does a lot of damage i mean look at that once you get the damage off it's it's unquestionably strong but um any teammate with a pot shot wrath stronger build with ranged weapon damage is gonna knock it out in no time and it's uh it's a lot less common that you get that discharger shot off than I originally thought it might be. See, look, my teammates just shoot it before I do, and he's using the black metal build, so 
I, it's just almost completely dead before I even get a chance to participate. So, yeah. Anyway, not a lot for the Teddy to do on this wave. I'll come back uh, on another one. So I've been cutting out all the pillar waves. And just in case you guys don't know why, this is why. Uh, my teammates might kill these before I do. But, like, look, if you position yourself well, you can just come over here and do this. Uh, <laughs> it, it doesn't really count as a challenge to me this is basically a dead wave nothing really happens here the only difficulty is actually finding the pillars but once you do they they die immediately so yeah i i think in the future they'll probably up the uh up the health of those so they don't die immediately with no no challenge but for now they are basically not waves and there are four of them i believe three or four pillar waves which are essentially free rounds so because of my teddy, uh, my teammates have been bullying. Uh, so because of my teddy, I haven't been using my materials. My teammates have been bullying me to use my, my builds. So I'm just going to be putting a few electric fields down. These should be helping with fragments. Not that I'm really struggling in that department. But the difficulty of this is largely non-existent. Because the way that Ord Mode is set up is that it's like we're slowly ramping up towards a power level 140 mission. Which... I mean, we do 164 players for fun. So it, as experienced high-level players, this is not posing a challenge, and I uh, I don't really see the need to use my brain much. But you know what? It's it's still fun. Oh, yeah. Look at all that beautiful day. Let me drop a teddy down. There we go. Easy kills. Easy kills. I don't even know where they are. But, oh, back here. Nope. There's a nurse. She's dead. Got her. Got her. Take care of. No problem. Oh, that's a flinger. Don't want them to throw. Don't throw. Don't throw. Okay, we got him. We got him. Whew. That would have been devastating. <laughs> I don't know what this video has turned into. This went from a teddy showcase to just sealing electric fields, raining damage. Uh, now now I'm I'm talking crap about horde mode, but not really crap. It's, it's honestly serious feedback where I like the idea of ramping up and up and up, getting stronger and stronger. Frostline's one of my favorite game modes, but... Uh, you know, the power level of these enemies that we're facing right now should be doubled, uh, I think. Or at least ramp up to like a 164 player or something. I mean, the hardest enemies that we fight in this game mode is like 200, 220, something like that. Is that just out of range? That's so annoying. All right, let's, let's pop that teddy. That way we'll kill this smasher super easy. There we go. Look at that. Oh, yeah. Look at that damage. It's so good. Uh, metal corrosion doesn't really make too much of a difference because normal enemies are not really hitting our base and they're the ones that trigger metal corrosion that's gonna be a high value discharger shot oh yeah there we go smasher's dead miss monster only survived because the nurse was healing it but now i got my all-powerful teddy and uh that's the the thing about teddy teddy falls off heavily late game it is not gonna be doing a lot nowadays so yeah, that's kind of my, my critique. If you guys are going to run Teddy, it's really fun for these early missions. Um, honestly, it can get you through, no problem, as demonstrated. And then towards the end, you can pretty much do exactly what I'm doing. Like, I'm pretending like my teammates are bullying me, but it's true. I should be using my traps. And that's kind of what's doing most of the work here. So if you want, like, a horde mode tutorial, if that were at all necessary, I'd say run Teddy. Get some easy kills, easy, easy cleanup. You know, don't have to craft any weapons or think about it too hard. And then just go ahead and... Uh, trap up at the end when you're nice and rich from all the crates and uh, enjoy an easy victory so i don't know exactly where the spawns are gonna be because the storm hasn't caught up yet so i'm gonna wait a second it uh turns out i was waiting in the wrong location so uh, i'm gonna get to the correct area first and then trap <laughs> All right, now I'm in the, the proper area. Here we go. I got my 14 electric fields remaining. This is going to be an interesting area to trap because it's mostly covered, but I don't think it's going to be a problem. Just drop one. Oh, that's a mistake, but honestly should be fine. Do that. I don't want it to connect too much. Do that. Do that. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. And then I'm going to come over here. Do this, do this, do that, do this, do that, do this. I don't want them to be able to walk on my traps, so I'm trying to place it far enough away where it's not going to get blown up or spawned on or whatever, but still going to be in an effective location, and that should just about do it. So, perfect timing. Wave 13. Oh my god, it's a pillar wave. Yeah, I always forget about that. Did I just trap? Did I just trap up a pillar wave? 
Like, if this rotates to the next objective, I, this will be a minor inconvenience. This will almost frustrate me, but uh, not quite, because I'm, I'm having a great day. I'm going to break these pillars, and I'll check in with you guys later. Yeah, I uh, trapped it up for nothing, and I'm feeling terrible about it. You know, this is going to be one of those ways where we fully transition away from being a Teddy user. I'm just going to be focused on targeting all the smashers that I can, because... With the current bug in the game where smashers can damage the objective, I am finding that... Oh, what the hell was that? He just slipped into the floor. I'm finding them to be very important to target. So, what, what, are, you, what are you doing? What is that smasher doing? You know what? I think he's more of a danger to himself than us, so I'm just going to leave him alone. I'm going to find a different one to shoot at because that one does not seem to be worried about doing anything to our defense. Uh-oh. Oh, oh, gotta kill him. Nice little snipe. Xenobo is so dumb. This weapon is so ridiculous. Go through walls, wherever you want it to be, easy peasy, not even worried about it, and uh, honestly, I don't know what else to show from, from this, you know, the video is over 20 minutes long, so I think I'm going to kill, okay, that smasher just disappeared, I think I'm going to tune in with the final wave, and uh, you guys can see, finally, once and for all, if the, if the teddy holds up, we know it doesn't, but I want to I wanna see the final wave, you know, I'm not going to record this long, you know, these videos take about an hour, because uh, there's been a lot cut out from this YouTube video. And I want to um, I want to see whether or not we win with you guys. So I think we got this 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 uh, wave on lock. I'm going to take out the smasher real quick. Always satisfying to watch the discharger work. When it does no damage, and then the next one kills it. It's such a weird weapon. Like, you have to hit it right on the ball or else it doesn't do anything. I don't know. I'll see you guys in the final wave. That's what I'm getting towards. And here it is. The final wave. The with smasher, Teddy doing uh, oh, yeah, decent amount. I forgot to fully mute Discord. I'm so sorry. But uh, this is where we could actually lose because Smashers, like I said, damage objectives, and they're going to be coming in. So I need to be paying a lot of attention. We have a lot of tar pits. Oh, my God. A lot of tar pits down. Uh, 211. I need to remember that number for uh, what power level the enemies get up to. Um, but, yeah, Smashers can damage. That's a big deal. And we decided not to save our traps because why would you? You can't bring them with you out of this game. So killing or getting every single trap down while we can is kind of important because what are you saving them for? You know, every I feel like when I finish video games, you know, like every inventory item that you have that wasn't spent in some way is kind of wasted. You know, like when I stopped playing Breath of the Wild and I had mostly finished that game for everything it had to offer me, I realized that every item I had in my inventory was just kind of wasted. <laughs> I had, you know, I had no plans for it. I wasn't going to do any more stuff with it. And it was made me wonder, why did I farm this certain resource? Why did I collect so many of these beetles if I never, ever planned on using them? Anyway, same concept here, all right, where I uh, want to use all the traps that we have. And I think we got this. I think we got this. The smashers are getting shut down just fine. Musicians got his uh, shotgun loadout. We got discharges everywhere. Tar pits. I put a bunch of tire traps down. Didn't even spend them all. All this talking about not wasting my traps, and I still didn't even spend every trap. So, you know, we've got all those tar pits. Or the, not the tar pits, the wall darts. All those wall darts just chunking away at that smasher's health. <laughs> so much damage. It's easy. Easy mode. Oh, yeah. Look at all these big health bars. We'll just shoot it just like that. A little discharger action. Oh, oh, yes. Just killing everything. Flinger doesn't even matter. Easy mode initiated. I don't think my Teddy was doing pretty much anything in that final wave, but it doesn't matter. Teddy, honestly, got to the early game. I recommend it as a loadout. Um, sorry if this video ran a little long. I didn't plan to record as many waves as I did, but it is ultimately horde mode. So considering we've got about... 26 to 28 minutes of actual fighting and then about 28 or more minutes of waiting more like 34 minutes of waiting i uh I try to record as little as possible but also show you guys as much as i can so uh yeah that's that's teddy bill thanks for watching twitch link down below subscribe on youtube uh i hope you enjoy the new game mode goodbye
Okay, all right. I'm gonna keep going just to record the the the, the rewards because I'm personally interested. All right, I want to know how many tickets we get because I feel like it was 17 for the first run, but I don't know if that was from challenges or the actual mission itself. So let's find out together. This is like my third or fourth run at this point. I don't think I, I'm getting any XP anymore. I'm getting normal in-game XP. I'm not getting battle pass XP. So 805 gold. Okay, there were no tickets that I glanced past. All right. And then on the next page, that's Danger in the Mist. That's the 100 that we get. Do you get no tickets from this? What? Uh-huh. I'm going to have to look into that. Bye bye But this video is over now. What are you still doing here? What are you... Are you waiting for me to just end it? Fine. 